They welcomed me there if I could assist. So it, it was important that I was there. And, and you met them, obviously. I didn't meet them. We okay. were in the same courtroom okay. and I was able to apologise face to face at the end, which was a really intense moment. Yeah, I'm sure. And how, how did they take that? Did they, they accept your apology, did they? I didn't speak to them, but when you look oh, right. in so, their okay, eyes you and you see it... And the courtroom it, saying, OK, yes, I get you. But, yeah. but I felt it. I could see that they knew that my apology was sincere, and it was. Mm. Yeah. Do you still think, however, that most people still associate you with that? Do you think that will live with you forevermore? Oh, look, I'll always be the Royal Hoax DJ, but it doesn't need to define me, and I won't let it define me. I know, because you do want to return I to do. presenting now. And have, have you been looking? I have, and the reaction in Australia has not been good. People aren't willing to, to give me a chance. And a lot of people forget that I have worked in media for 15 years. I do have the experience, and I've grown and learnt so much from the prank call that I'm going to be a wiser announcer. You know, yeah. I, I think it's important to put me back on air because I have so much wisdom now from such a tragedy to try and help other announcers and radio staff with bettering processes and understanding that the comedy needs to be on us. You know, we shouldn't be taking the mickey out of other people.